Hey guys, welcome back, Andy here. I'm going to show you today a very handy app if your phone is rooted. Oh, titanium backup. Right, so this is one thing you may see when you first install. It wants us to make sure debugging is on. So let's go ahead and turn debugging on. We're going to settings, developer options, USB debugging. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Don't know quite why that wasn't on, but anyway, that's that's quite good because it shows you where you need to head to. So here's the overview. Um, I am on the the pro version. I don't know how I changed my email. It's a very old email address. Gives us a bit of information along the bottom there. Um, this is not really what we're interested in there. We're going to go to to backup and restore. So. What we have here, pretty much every single app that's on the phone, be it a system app, be it installed uh, by me. Um, the red ones are system apps. They came with the phone. The white ones are things that I've installed. Now, if we wanted to narrow that down, when we're at the top, click to edit filter. So this is where we set a filter. Filter by name. So let's say I'm looking for Google Music I'm going to type in music, we get a few options straight away. I can either press the green tick and I see them all there. Or, oopsie, as you might have seen, I basically selected the app itself and there it is. So, when I tap on the app, I get some, some options from Titanium Backup. I can back up the app, I can freeze the app, I can uninstall it, I can wipe the app data. I can run the app, which is just as effectively the same as if you tap on the app in your app drawer. Or I can restore data from a previous backup. Um, so if I hit backup, it simply it backs it up to a folder on your SD card or I think wherever you say you want it to go, um, in a folder called Titanium Backup. So let's have a let me clear that again. Let's say I only want the user installed apps. So these are all the things that I've installed myself. Now this is the pro version. I'm not sure you can do batch in the free version. If you are rooted, honestly, it's worth spending the money. It's only about four pounds. I'm going to tap the little tick up there. I can verify any backups I've done. This next section is the uh, important bit. So I can back up all of my apps. I can back up all my apps on system data. There's no system data selected at the moment because I'm just on the user apps. Um, force redo my backups. Back up new user apps and newer versions. So in other words, if I'm only backing up the apps themselves that are newer, that I've since the last backup, so I did one backup, as you just saw, the other 117 are old backups. So generally, I'm just going to hit one of these two at the top here, backup all apps. So there they are all selected, they're all ticked. I can either deselect them all, I can select them all, I can pause them, or I can exclude the ones that are currently running. Um, I can change the order. To back update, I mean, that's the, they've not been backed up, let's leave on that. Um, when I'm happy, I simply press the tick, and there it goes, backing up 118 apps. You can see it scrolls the, through the different names of whatever app it's backing up at the time. We get a progress uh, progress bar. That does also show up in the top there. Oh no, that's downloading music. Where's my backup? Yeah, so it's I'm downloading my Google Music. So it does give us updates in the notification bar. Now, I'm not sure. There we go. I think I've, yeah. So backup terminate. You get lots of notifications of everything you're doing, basically. Um, so yeah, you, you can't really, you're best off just when it's backing up, just put it down somewhere, leave it for, for 10 minutes, come back to it later. So now, um, let's not go into that one, sorry. When I go to the tick, I could... Restore. So I only got through nine of them, but I can hit that same as before. So if I'm if I'm swapping ROMs, for example, I can back everything up, and I might not want to put all of my ROMs back. So I might selectively, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, and just put back only what I want. Um, now we can we can f let's let's not move to that yet. There's there's a whole variety of other bits and pieces. The chat's usual system apps from the market, or you can reattach things to the market if it doesn't register that you've got it installed. Um, delete backups at the bottom there. All right, if we press the menu, let's come back out of there. Sorry, menu. So filters. That's that's what we were looking at. 
batch actions, that's what we're looking at, preferences. Um, auto sync TB settings, yeah, so I should remember what I'm doing. Enable Dropbox, so if you've got a Dropbox account, you can back it up and upload them straight to Dropbox, which is always a, a good safe way of, of doing things. Um, backup folder location, so there we go, we can set where it's gonna, so at the minute I'm on SD card and it's turning back up, that's fine. You can change compression, advanced app control. Um, all sorts of things, I've got to be honest, I generally don't use any of those, well I don't change hardly any of those, I'm not that hardcore a user of it, I'm just really showing you the basic bits here. Now, so that one there that's, that's in a, a different coloured strip, that's a frozen app, so I, you can see there I get the option to defrost it. Now, why would I freeze an app, I hear you ask. If we, let's clear all, all of those, let's go back just to system apps. Let's say I'm thinking... Um, well, I don't want all share. Why? Why have I even got it there? Rather than me going in, I mean, I could back up and uninstall. That's relatively safe. But if I just freeze it, like so, that's now frozen. That, for all, as far as the phone's concerned, now that's not installed. That's that won't. Nothing would appear in the app drawer. There's no function of that app now. Um, if something else stops working, something goes pear shaped, I'm going to worry about restoring. I'm going to worry about. Oh my God! I broke my phone. I just go back in and defrost it. Now, here comes the clever bit. If I want, so I've, certain apps eat more battery than other apps. Um, like I've noticed Google Plus, the sort of messenger service seems to keep my phone awake. So if I go and add a widget now, I only learned this bit myself quite recently. I've been using Titanium Backup for a long, long time. So Titanium Backup, two widgets. I want the actions, and it's a so the action performed by the widget, so you get a whole list of different things that a widget can do for you. So you can have a one button backup all apps for example, um, like we have down here. Look. But what I'm after is freeze, defrost, launch an app. So I tap that, it then scans what apps I've got to see what I can do to turn. I can go right, select an app. And like I said, I'm, I'm thinking about Google Plus. But another, another good example is, um, is Maps, for example, that can quite often cause battery drain. And then I just sit, tap Create Widget. Now, the widget looks a bit odd because I've got a custom desktop of about 12 by 9 rather than 4 by 4, so I'm going to resize it. Whoopsie. There you go, that's how it would look on your screen generally. It doesn't really fit with my theme at the moment, does it? So you'll notice it's got the Google Plus icon but with a red padlock. On it, so that's basically because the app is frozen. So when I tap it, it unfreezes the app and it runs the app. So then I got my update. I got uh, there's my notification. So I've missed out on a couple of notifications because I've had it frozen. Um, so I read through, I read through all my break perhaps. Okay, I'm done. Thanks very much. So at the minute I'm on a little green padlock. Look, I tap the icon once more. Google Plus has been frozen. And off I go, and it won't be draining my battery at all. So I already have these actually here, just for a few apps that I've, well, the pocket one, I'm just concerned that it runs in the background, I really don't need it to. Um, but when I need, so Maps is definitely one that's, because um, I do use Latitude, but I also use something else to track it when, when Maps is off. But if I still need to use Maps, I can tap that, it'll unfreeze it, launch Maps, and then when I'm done, I tap it again, and it's frozen. No, I don't need that, Make, making my screen look messy. So to me those are the big, oh yeah, so it's, we know I've, I've already done that, so I'm going to go to menu, there should be a reload application at the bottom, that just makes it restart, I won't get the error message this time. So this is the other one that's very clever, you can basically schedule it to, to back up all your apps at a certain time. Um, redo backups for modified data, blah, blah, blah. You just select one of them, or you, you make a new schedule to just back everything up and upload it to Dropbox, perhaps, overnight. Edit. So I want it to happen at 3 in the morning. I want it to happen every day. When finished, sync to Dropbox. And I want it to back up all user apps. No filter. So you can set a filter just kind of... So maybe there's only 10 apps that I'm really worried about the, the data, so I could set a filter of scheduled apps and then select it in there and just those scheduled apps get synced and uploaded Dropbox each night. 
I'm not going to save it because I'm not going to use that. Limit. I might do that though later. Set up a, just a few that I want to make sure I keep safe in Dropbox. Um, I think that's all. Oh, there is. How do we? How do I best show you? There is another. If I hold down on an app, I get some different options: force close, assign labels, send latest backup, view Android market info, view in market, attach to market. So I can force an app to link to the market. Enable multiple profiles. Convert to user app. So at the moment it's stored in system, I could convert that over into the user side app. That's kind of handy for, for more for user apps. I can push them into the system space. Um, I didn't really say much about the wipe data thing, I suppose. Quite often you can have problems with an app. Something like Facebook, perhaps. Um, and if I select wipe data, that basically just clears all the app data for me for that application so I can't almost like a fresh install so if you have a problem with that wipe data and then run it again um, and you're probably you're probably going to have fixed it um, I think that's I mean there's, there is probably so much more that you can do and I'm probably only using titanium backup to sort of a third of its um, well, that's how last to say I don't I don't think I need that so I'm going to delete that I'm going to freeze it for now and then I'll see if something comes up that doesn't work and I'll, uh, I'll realise. I think it was a theme for something else. So yeah, I've got a launcher that's frozen there just so it doesn't confuse things. I can fr uh, defrost that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Ask any questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, well, like I said, I'm not a power user of it, but it is. If you're rooted, this is just... Especially if you change ROMs a lot, you can't beat just backing up all your data. Uh, maybe store it safe somewhere on a computer just in case. You flash a new ROM, you restore all the app data with the apps, and it just oh, it just makes life so much easier. So that's Titanium Backup. There is a free version and there's a paid version. The paid version is around just between four or five pound. It is worth um, buying if you're rooted. My name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.